Rayquaza, a restricted with base 150 physical attack and access to the strongest priority move in the game. Couple that with Defiant, Galarian Zapdos, and Mirror Armor Corviknight for opposing Intimidators. We got Throat Chop for Ferrigarath, and we even have Prankster Misty Terrain for anybody who wants to try and set Psychic Terrain. We are gonna be hitting hard today and punishing anybody who wants to stand in our way. Like, comment, subscribe, and let's hop into some battles here, shall we? Going up against a Coridon team here. Of course, we do not have to worry too much about weather. We got a Rayquaza. So all those Pokemon that benefit from Sun, which is mainly going to be the Walking Wake and the Fluttermane, uh, unless they have a booster energy themselves, we can sort of shut that down. Depending on like the turns, right? Which which Pokemon come out when, what activates when. They also do have the Ferrigarath, so that is something that I am concerned about because we can, if we can get rid of the Ferrigarath, uh, we have a much better time in this game. For that reason, I'm going to leave with my Zapdos and my Dog Pal. They're usually the ones that I use to try and get rid of Ferrigarath as fast as possible. Um... And Corviknight's also an awesome Pokemon in this matchup. Depends a little bit on whether or not the Walking Wake has a fire move. But we're we're fully specially defensive on the Corviknight. Uh, fully specially defensive on the Corviknight, so hopefully we'll be able to take something once at least. And they're just gonna leave. Jeez, those Pokemon are big. Relax. Just large models. They did not bring the Frigga, or at least they didn't leave with it, so. They get the speed heightened. Okay. I'm feeling like I can Brave Bird you, because I got a Choice Scarf, and I can swap in Rayquaza hard. We're going to risk getting hit by something here. I don't know that they'll go for a dragon move into the Chen Pao. And if I can do this correctly, if the booster energy is on the Walking Wake, then that'll still pop, I believe, when I turn off the sun here. But if not, then we're turning off the sun, and that will confirm that my Zapdos will outspeed the Walking Wake. Because we'll be turning off their boost with the with the Protosynthesis. My hope is that they just go for a fire move or a fighting move into that slot, and Rayquaza will eat that, no problem. Yep, there goes the Protosynthesis. Protosynthesis. They just go for Protect. So that's totally fine. They didn't Terror or anything either, so this is just a Choice Scarf Brave Bird right to the dome. Goodbye, Coridon. I'm sorry. I do like Coridon quite a bit, but not mad about that. Here comes Ensign. They're going to give me the attack boost. All right. Um, right. I'm kind of feeling like if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We still, we have, we are intimidated with the Rayquaza. There's no way to stop that, really. But I kind of feel like... Actually, you know what? Like, the who's the bigger threat here? I think it might be the Insin. Hmm. Insin's a physical attacker is the only thing. Let's go after the Insin here. And I am gonna Terra Normal so that if we do get hit by a dragon move. Since I'm not attacking the Walking Wake, I'm opening myself up to getting hit by a dragon move here. I could also get faked out. Like, it, their plan could totally be to fake out Zapdos because they know that they just gave me a boost. Yep. The question is, do they now double into Zapdos to try and get rid of it? They could totally do that because they know they have the Intimidate on, uh, on Rayquaza. No, they go for a Draco. Okay, cool. 
then the then that felt like a really good play. Okay. Um I can now Brave Bird the Insin. I'm a little bit nervous about giving them the uh the speed boost again, right? Although they did just protect with the Walking Wake, so is now a good opportunity. Like that's probably now in like Sacred Sword range on the Insin. Is now the opportunity to switch focus. I think I might switch focus actually. We can Brave Bird into you and we can Oh no, they didn't just protect. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just gonna Brave Bird into you and I'll I'll cover by extreme speeding into you, getting some damage off. There's the protect. Brave Bird should kill Insin here. I hope. We're, we're technically at plus one with the Galarian Zapdos. I wish I could be going for close combat, but we are locked in. This is the hyper offense element of the team, where it's like a choice band Rayquaza sitting next to a choice scarf Galarian Zapdos. It feels really, really good to use, but it's like you're locking into your moves, so. You better hope there's no ghost types around. And there's the Amoongus. Interesting. Well. I'm going to Brave Bird into you, and I'm going to E-Speed into you. You just protected. If you want a Rage Powder, you can go ahead, but then I'll just eliminate the Amoongus, and that'll be fine. And now we're around the time where Sun is just going to disappear on its own naturally, which uh, will mean that the Walking Wake is definitely less threatening. Airlock coming up massive in this game. They're just going to protect the Amoongus. Totally fine. Rayquaza with minus one attack, still putting in the work. I mean, that did so much damage still, too. The band is still no joke. And honestly, look at Galarian Zapdos just sitting on this field the entire game. Initially, when I was making this team, I ran it with a clear amulet at first on the Rayquaza because I was like, okay, I don't want my physical, dedicated physical attacker to be uh, uh, you know, intimidated a lot. But if you just surround a Pokemon with defiant users and other like other things that your opponent doesn't want to bring because they see, oh, there's a King Gambit or oh, there's a Galarian Zapdos or there's a uh, Ogre Pond, like you can really dissuade people or just punish them, right? And and Galarian Zapdos is not a Pokemon that I've really used at all in Scarlet and Violet, but it, it's such a nice matchup to Incineroar specifically because you can just threaten that thing so hard, especially if they give you the plus one. Good game to my opponent. All right, we got a Miraidon team. They got the Iron Moth to go with the Electric Terrain. They got an Alolan Raichu. It took me a second to, to clock that as an Alolan Raichu. Yeah, uh, uh, that's also going to be boosted by the Electric Terrain. And we have a uh, <laughs> Wo Chien, which is interesting. They do have an Intimidator as well, so we can maybe make use of that. I can tell you right now, I kind of like Galarian Zapdos as a lead here in case they do lead with Landorus because it's not like they can Intimidate me and fake me out with Landorus. Uh, I can lead with Whimsicott as well. Whimsicott will take... Mo like, Whimsicott's a really nice defensive matchup to Miraidon with the ability with the Prankster Misty Terrain to turn off Electric Terrain if I feel like I want to do that. So that is going to be my leads for sure. We're going to bring Rayquaza, of course. And the last Pokemon is maybe not... Maybe not Corviknight in this game. Uh, it's probably just Chen Pao, but in the back this time. What I got to be careful about when I, again, this is just such a hyper offense team, especially when you're not bringing Volcarona or Corviknight, because it's like, okay, who even do I switch in here? There are some nice tight matchups that make it easier to switch things in and out. Uh, but, I mean, for example, like the Galarian Zapdos, if they were to have a fairy type Pokemon and, and it's like, okay, they're threatening me with a fairy move into Galarian Zapdos, and I brought these two in the back, it's like, okay, Rayquaza gets smacked by a fairy move, and so does Chen Pao. In those situations, you really got to consider Corviknight and Volcarona. It's why they're there. So they led with these two. Um, I can U-turn right now into you. And I can just Misty Terrain to turn off the Electric Terrain. Now, I'm leaving their Miraidon wide open. 
but they're not going to be able to kill me with an electric move, especially now that the electric moves are weakened. This will make the Zapdos faster than the Raichu. We're going to knock it to what looks like a Sash. And here's a bit of a more difficult decision. Again, I'm going into two Pokemon who I would rather not take a ton of damage here. I doubt they went for a dragon move into that slot. If anything, they're going for electric moves, which Rayquaza takes neutrally. Chen Pao is just a piece of paper, though. I am going to go into Rayquaza. It would be awesome if I just stayed alive here. Electro Drift is going to hit me hard, especially if this thing is Specs. Yep. And they just nuzzled my Whimsicott. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. If I can get the Tailwind, then the play here is to... I can Dragon Claw into the Miraidon slot. Now, how much do I feel like they're going to want to reset Electric Terrain? Because the other thing I can do uh, is just E-Speed. And Tailwind. I feel like they're going to want to reset the Electric Terrain. I really do. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think I might just drag an Ascent into this slot and go for a Tailwind. We're just going to pretend like this is a 100% chance that I'm going to get this off. If I full para, that's going to suck. They take out the threat so they can bring in, if it's the Wo Chien, then that's awesome. That's why I wanted to lock into uh, Dragon Ascent there. And they're just going to protect. Well, that's fine, too. Let's get the Tailwind. We got it. Okay. Now I might even be able to Moonblast that sucker. Uh, it's a little riskier because they could just swap in Miraidon hard there. But I honestly even feel like that doesn't gain them a ton. Like, I think that I can pull this off. I'm hoping that Whimsicott will outspeed the uh, Raichu because I am parried, but I'm behind Tailwind. Is it just the Miraidon again? To take the Dragon Ascent? Yep. They can't stop me from Misty Training again, though. Whatever the Raichu is about to do here is not going to... Uh, kill Whimsicott. Oh, they just Endeavor. Interesting. It did half. Resisted. Did half. That's crazy. Well, I don't have to do anything differently now, then. That was so much damage. Dragon Ascent is an absolutely busted move on a Pokemon this strong. My defenses are down now, but I'm the fastest thing on the field. I don't care. Keep in mind, by the way, this is an adamant Rayquaza with max attack and max speed. So you're not as fast as you possibly can be, but you are as strong as you possibly can be with speed on top of that. So, you know, E-speed doesn't really rely on speed, but all these other moves definitely do. Do I outspeed Miraidon if I am... Um, Paralyzed with Moonblast. I honestly don't care. I'm just going to drag an Ascent again into the Muridon. Um, And we might just Misty Terrain again. Let's just get rid of it. They're going to bring back Muridon. They really want to keep the Misty or the Electric Terrain possible. They're going to give me their fighting type. It's a really hard Pokemon to switch in. Switch into. Water type Chen or uh, uh, Wo Chien. That's a little troubling. I don't totally have anything that I can hit super hard. I'm not getting full parrot here, so Whimsicott's absolutely coming through. Dragon Ascent can't miss. I'm honestly wondering if they can knock out Rayquaza here. Like what? Like I'm gonna be at minus two, defense-wise. But what does the Wo Chien have to hit Rayquaza right now? It's usually like Ruination and Leech Seed. 
Maybe a pollen puff? Could, could a pollen puff kill me? Just going for a snarl. Can't take out Rayquaza. They are going to get rid of Whimsicott. Okay. I'm just going to go Zapdos here. I'm locked into Dragon Ascent, and that's the move that I want to be locked into. I think that they are choiced on their Miraidon, actually. Because they haven't protected a single time, and they just keep switching out hard. It feels like they could be benefited by protecting at some point here, but they just haven't been. Um, I'm going to Dragon Ascent you, and I'm going to Close Combat you. Yeah. And if they want to, if all they have as an attacking move is Snarl, then they're just going to boost uh, uh, Galarian Zapdos here by lowering my stats. I'm like very pumped about how this game's going because I feel like you look at my team and you think, oh, there's so many flying types. This person's weak. Like this team is weak to me, Rhydon specifically, who just won a regional too, just won the first regulation G regional. Um, but I think that this like misty terrain tech is like a really nice way to put Miraidons in a lot of trouble, especially if m a lot more of the team is built around electric terrain being necessary. Like without having what seems like it would be like an obvious, like there's no ground Pokemon, you would feel like that would be a perfect way to get rid or to deal with Miraidon. Um, there's still plenty of ways to, to punish Miraidon here. I think I just swap out into Chen Pao so this thing can't protect stall me. It also is going to boost the damage output of Dragon Ascent. Protect all you like. You are only stalling the inevitable. I'm also loving that, like, yeah, I had to switch in my Rayquaza and take a ton of damage, but that was the only time Rayquaza was really able to get touched. It technically, it was hit by a Snarl, but... Keep in mind, too, by the way, I just realized that I didn't, like, mention this, but the Chen Pao is Focus Sash with no Protect. Be careful about that. The whole reason that I have that there is because of Furigraph. If you're up against Furigraph, you got to eliminate that thing. So you got to throw chop, you got to U-turn, whatever you got to do on turn one to get rid of the Furigraph. It's really important because otherwise one Pokemon can shut down the entire Rayquaza Chen Pao situation. Anyway, super happy with how that game went. Good game to my opponent. And now we have a Curem Black team. I see a lot of things that I want to close combat over there. So honestly, Galarian Zapdos might be coming to a third game here. Not mad about that. Um, I might need to lead it with Tailwind. So I'm kind of feeling like I can lead with you and you. Obviously, we're going to... Oh, sorry. I did that wrong. You and you. Rayquaza will be there. I kind of want to... I kind of want to bring... Yeah, I think that uh, I think that Volcarona might actually be able to do some stuff for me here. In that last game against the Miraidon team, we had to switch in Rayquaza in a, a situation that worked out, right? Because Rayquaza got hit really hard by one move, but did survive it, and then couldn't really get uh, couldn't really get knocked out for the rest of that game. Um, but having Volcarona to switch into is something that I'm interested in and having. And I can like right now, if I really wanted to, like I could U-turn. I might just do that. I'm a little bit uh, wary of what they might go for. They might just Terra, right? So I think I'm just gonna U-turn out, play it a little bit safer. 
because Volcarona is such a nice switch in here, you know? So we get the Tailwind. I think we're probably just going to see like a Fire move into... Or, or like an Icicle Spear into the Wings of God to take that out. U-Turn is going to deal neutral damage, and we crit on it too. Not bad. But now Volcarona comes in here every single day of the week. The Howl. That's fun. And Icicle Spear to take out Whimsicott. Totally cool. Totally fine. We're all right. Um, I can go into Rayquaza now. My, I'm really concerned. I think that fi like all of these like dragon uh, restricteds do run Fairy Terra, so I am concerned about going in and trying to just like close combat that thing. I still think it's possible that they go for Fairy Terra. So E Speed is my move of choice. I'm just gonna Heat Wave and. kind of cool play here is actually to Grass Terra U, Rage Powder, and Earthquake. A little strange, but this helps me deal with the... Uh, this helps me hit the uh, Gouging Fire a little bit better. Really, I should be more careful about the fact that if I lock into Earthquake, I'm stuck on Earthquake, and I can't E-Speed. This is the problem with winning your first two games in that third game. I just want I just want to do some crazy stuff. <laughs> and here comes the Terra from the Gouging Fire. This is probably the Fairy Terra. Yep. Jeez, that's a big... I don't remember that hat being that big, but... Okay. And now if this is just like a breaking swipe, that'll, that'll just be a shame. Um... We did a lot of... Not even a lot of damage. We did an okay amount of damage. It is just the breaking swipe. We'll get a little bit of a... They get the crit on the Volcarona. We'll get a little bit of chip with the Rocky Helmet. We should, right? Breaking swipe is a contact move. Oh, we also burned it. Ooh, the Fairy Terror not looking so smart anymore, is it? Okay. Uh, I'm going to Heat Wave. I'm going to switch hard into Zapdos. Ideal scenario, they go for another Breaking Swipe uh, at what is now a reduced attack uh, output. And they give me a Defiant Boost here. And the Grass Terra feels really good uh, next to the uh, in front of the Ogre Pond as well. They actually are Protect, not Burning Bullock. That's really interesting. They Spiky Shield. Okay. Were they stalling the last turn of Tailwind? Was that the last turn of Tailwind? I still have one more. I still have one more. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to Heat Wave again. And now, do I U-turn a Brave Bird into... I think I can just Brave Bird, honestly. Gonna do a lot of damage. There goes Ogre Palm. I think I'm gonna outspeed the Gouging Fire with Volcarona now too, and I might I might just kill that thing before it can do anything to me. All right. That uh, that flame body was massive there. I think it really sort of stopped my opponent from being able to just. Breaking Swipe there again. Like, if they'd Breaking Swiped again there, then they would have threatened Volcarona's livability on this next turn. And now I'm sitting here with the potential ability to Rage Powder. Uh, 
Um, I'm Choice Scarf, so I will move before before these things. I think that the biggest thing is that I just need to kill the Fluttermain. I don't think I Rage Powder. I think that on the off chance that that thing is like Scarf or that the Brave Bird doesn't pick up the KO, I think I gotta try to kill it. So I'm gonna Heat Wave and I'm gonna Brave Bird. I, I gotta go for the Fluttermane because I can't E speed the Fluttermane. Oh, Jesus. Glaring Zapdos is absolutely the star of this video. I mean, Rayquaza is doing cool stuff too, but Scarf, Glaring Zapdos, get out of here doing so much for me. What's kind of cool is that it was like a, it was a hidden scarf there too because I tailwinded turn one which made me like would have made me outspeed the QRM black. So it didn't like it didn't like trigger as weird for them that Galarian Zapdos moved first on that turn that first turn. Uh, but now that Tailwind's gone, they were like, okay, now I'll outspeed the Galarian Zapdos with Fluttermane. No. Hidden Scarf. Oh, gosh. This team is really interesting because I really feel like uh, on paper it doesn't totally show all of its synergies immediately. Um... But I kind of built it backwards from like, what are the things that stops me from wanting to e-speed through everything with Choice Band Rayquaza? And I ended up with this kind of like mishmash of Pokemon that are like all good in their own right. But when you see them together, it's like there's not one immediate strategy that's happening. Um, and that sort of throws off the opponent from knowing exactly what to do. And it allows you to surprise them with the damage output of the Choice Band Rayquaza. It allows you to surprise them with the Choice Scarf and the Galarian Zapdos. Um, yeah, I, I really dug this team a lot. Good game to my opponent. And that is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for clicking on it in the first place. If you want to use this Rayquaza team, of course, you can check the description on all of my videos. I have the rental code PokePaste and the full team breakdown down there. If you want to join me for a stream Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is typically when I do that. I'm always battling against the chat or... Uh, going on the ranks ladder. That's what I'm doing this week. So if you want to join me tomorrow night, if you're watching this on the day of the upload, then uh, I'd love to see you there. I'm just going to be climbing as high as I can with whatever team I decide to do it with. Uh, might be this team. I don't know. I had a lot of fun using Rayquaza. I think that it's a really nice anti-meta pick, especially on the ranks ladder with closed team sheet and all that. Uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Uh, and if you did and you haven't seen my other Regulation G videos, well, they're hovering around my face right now. Click on one of them. Just click on one of them or let this auto play out and it'll probably hopefully uh, uh, auto play to my next video. <laughs>